Should women today wear head coverings in the public worship service? I'm going to give you some arguments for and some arguments against. Arguments for. Paul builds this entire argument on creation, not something out of the first century. He builds it on creation, going all the way back to the beginning, to the first man and to the first woman, and he is presenting a timeless practice that transcends the first century. Second, Paul appeals to the practice of churches, plural, extending far beyond merely the church in Corinth, singular, in what he is teaching here. Third, Paul argues that he has no other practice than what he has just taught about head coverings. Those are the arguments for, and those need to be addressed, and those need to be answered. Now, arguments against head coverings. The analogy of Scripture itself. This practice is not taught anywhere else in the Bible. There is nothing else in the Bible to support or to corroborate with what Paul states here. Ideally, in interpreting the Bible, we would love to see three things. We would love to see it taught by Jesus, practiced in the book of Acts, and clarified in the epistles. Those three in a row. For example, uh, with foot washing, we see it taught by Jesus, but we do not see it practiced in the early church, in the book of Acts, anywhere, and it is not clarified in the epistle. So it is isolated to uh, a unique situation, and that is why we as a church do not practice foot washing, because it does not appear that the whole counsel of God uh, lines up together to teach this, that it was something that Jesus did on that one occasion with his disciples. So it's not a third ordinance. Regarding head covering, Jesus never taught this. The book of Acts gives no indication of any church in any place ever practicing this and no other epistle beyond this one place addresses this. That is problematic. And then, as I said in verse 16, the mention of practice, we have no other practice, can mean custom. And I quote the Reformation Study Bible. Paul does not use exactly this kind of argument anywhere else in any of his letters. Such a conclusion to a difficult passage may give some support to the view that the apostle was not prescribing permanent forms of worship, but dealing with questions of cultural appropriateness. Close quote. I would say that each person's conscience should lead them. And those who feel that a timeless principle is here should feel free to wear, if they want to wear a head covering or a veil to church, that would be just as fine as if you wanted to wash one another's feet. But I do think that in the whole, on the big picture, looking at the entirety, that this is a unique situation, but I must admit, I do not know what to do with churches, plural, in verse 16, and I'm a man who is under authority. So I need more time to sort through this and to come to a better understanding and to answer some of my own questions. And I'm glad that I have questions because that means I'm understanding the issues. Because as I began this message with the superior exegetical minds of this passage, they too stand somewhat dumbfounded at different points and try to understand what was apparent in the first century, but it's very difficult for us to understand 